I'm the executive director of NBRPC. So I've read a lot about your work so far in going places. And welcome to new and old, to the new participants that were invited or appointed to participate, as well as those that have been with the process for a while. We're certainly in the home stretch with this process. And now you're going to help us, everyone collectively, to get over the goal line with this project. Um, so we're happy that all of our staff are here at their posts. And we have a consultant team. The new addition uh, is in phase three is Della Rucker and her team. And you know Della through the involvement uh, so far through the surveys and so forth. So thank you for your feedback and uh, guides on how to do this process. I'm going to make a statement right now about going to places. Hang on. <laughs> so let's be a little bit more casual on this process. My jacket's off. Let's roll up our sleeves. Let's get to work. Um, you've done provide a lot of great input, and we look forward to participating with you through this process. Della, you want to come on over and tell us what we're doing today? Absolutely. If I speak at this volume, I think I'm, my mic is not on. One second, please. This is funny, I have to work the button coming here, so. Ah. Uh, La, 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 la. All right. If I speak at this volume, can you, everybody hear me okay? Is anybody getting blown away? Like, you're not waiting, don't be so loud. No? Because you will probably say that at some point throughout this process. Like that moment right there. Let's put this thing down. All right. So, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Wow, it's like church. They actually like respond when you say that. It's incredible. All right. Thank you very much for coming out. As Brian said, you're in the tail end of what I know some of you has been a very long effort here. We are going to have a little bit of a different experience here today than for most of the rest of the time we spend working together. And that is that I'm going to do a fair amount of talking today, and you're sitting in rows like good little students. And after today, that will not be the case. Neither of those will be the case. So I ask you to bear with me a little bit while I give you some introductions and a little bit of a frame of reference for how we're proceeding. You will get to do some stuff shortly. But before we do that, I want to kind of give you an orientation to where we are and how we're going to be moving forward from this point out. As you've heard from Brian and from your assorted eight zillion emails, my name is Della Rucker. I'm the principal of a firm called the Wise Economy Workshop. We work with communities across the country to do economic revitalization planning and public engagement. So it's a two-pronged practice. I'm not going to give you my whole bio, and that's in part because it's online. Anything that you ever want to know about what I think about something, what my perspective is, blah, 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 I have maintained a blog and I produce a podcast and I've done this for a long time. So anything that I say in this room, you're going to have to and I hope that you will be confident is the truth of what I perceive, the truth of what I see and what I understand, because you can go online and check anytime you want. Just Google Wise Economy Workshop, and you will either get my website or you'll get this company out of Minnesota that makes seats that go in um, fishing boats. So I don't do fishing boats. So just for that perspective. I have a planning degree, I have a planning degree, I have a planning certification, and I have an economic development certification. And in this project, I'm going to be leaning primarily on the economic, I'm sorry, on the planning foot, because we'll be talking about planning issues. But I'm also going to pull in a fair amount of that economic development 
Muslim perspective. So you'll be hearing that as well. Obviously, I can't do this alone. So in addition to working in partnership with MBRPC staff, I've also got some people who will be helping me. In the far back corner, Charlie, stick your hand up, please, is Charlie Bowman. Charlie is on the Wise Economy team. He runs a firm called Economic Data, EDDS. We'll go with that one. Um, I knew I was going to forget that second D. It happens every time. Economic Development Data Systems, Services. So, uh, Charlie is maybe familiar to some of you in about, uh, he's a career city manager, and uh, about 15 years ago, he was the city manager for the city of Xenia. And he's worked in communities across the state. Over here, manning the camera, is Matt Shad. Matt may also be familiar to some of you. Matt has been with, he's done planning and economic development for the city of Arlington, city of Upper Arlington, for Fairborn back in the day, and for a variety of other communities in the Dayton and Cincinnati and Columbus areas. And I asked these two gentlemen to be on the team for this project, particularly because of their experience working with the local government context, with the tough decision making that you folks have to face and will face in this process. So I want to start by talking a little bit about some expectations, about some goals, about how this process in this final phase of going places is going to differ from the way that you have worked previously. Now, how many of you have been on a going places committee since the very beginning? Okay, probably a third to a half of the room. How many people came in at some point during 2009, 2010, 2011, or 12? Okay, handful. How many, for, for how many of you is this the first time you attended the Going Places meeting? Okay, good. <laughs> thank you, Brian. <laughs> Great, well thank you. For those of you that are relatively new to this process, some of this is going to sound like, well, yeah, whatever. For those, so this, this next piece is directed particularly to people who have been involved with this for a while, because I want you to have a very, very clear understanding of what it is that you're going to be asked to do, what it is that we will do, and what the base expectations are moving forward. First of all, as Brian referenced, we did a survey, and I think most, if not all, of you would have received that survey. We surveyed the members of the board of the TAP, the steering committee of this group, and the planning advisory committee. And we asked them, we really wanted to dig into what was the experience that you have as part of this process. And I will tell you that the results weren't all that surprising to us. I think they um, gave the, the uh, hardworking staff of NBRPC a, a couple of opportunities to go out and have beers and commiserate with each other. But that was important feedback. In addition to that, we did some group meetings where we had discussions with folks to kind of delve a little bit deeper into some of those issues, some of those things that have happened. I want you to know that we've heard that, we understand it, we as a consulting team and in partnership with staff, including Brian, process that very, very deeply, and we've really structured this process for this phase around what we learned from it. We're not going to rehash. What's done is done. We're not going to go, that, that piece of the work is finished, but I want you to know that we heard and we learn, and I hope we understood. As we go through this process, if you have feedback from me on ways that you think the process could be improved, or landmines that you think maybe we don't know are there as a consulting team, please feel free to let me know. You've got my contact information. 
through the 47 different emails that you've received from me today. If you'd like my card, I'm happy to give it to you. I've got it with me today. But I want you to know that we're not going to talk anymore about what's happened in the past in terms of the process and how people felt or didn't feel about how things went forward. Our objective at this phase is to have the Going Places process culminate in a toolbox. And you're going to hear about toolboxes, and you're going to see pictures of toolboxes. And you're going to get really sick of toolboxes, which is usually what happens to people who work with me on planning initiatives. Because I think toolboxes are completely critical to how we need to proceed. It's a complex region. There's a complex range of issues. It's going to take a complex skill set. Now, in talking to folks about this process, we have heard that from some people, but from other people, sometimes we've, we've gotten a perception that people think there's only one way to address the issues that this region faces. And when we did some of the, the small group meetings, I would take my pen and I would put it in the middle of the table. And it was pen because that was what I had worked with. And I would say, people seem to think that there's only one way to do this, that it's a binary yes no decision. And my message to you today, and my message to you through this whole process is going to be it's not. There are many, many things that MBRBC can do to help facilitate an effective future for the region, including many things that haven't been on MBRBC's radar, but are things that other MPOs across the country that are dealing with the same exact fundamental issues are doing. We're going to be talking about those, and you're going to be grappling with those choices and those options. And if I bend down and look at my notes, then I yell. All right? So this is, not, this is not about one thing. This is not about one choice. This is not about some kind of yes no. It's about figuring out the toolbox. I want to be very, very upfront about something. And that is that there is no predetermined agenda for what comes out of this phase. There is nobody at MBRPC, on staff, on the board, on anywhere, who is telling me this needs to be in there, this needs to not be in there. This, is, this has to be an outcome of going places, this does not have to be an outcome of going places. When we did the surveys, some people seemed to think that that was the case. And I want to tell you flat out, and I have this from Brian, I have this from Martin, I have this from the chair of the board. That's not the case. What comes out of this will be what the region needs and what you determine that the region needs coming out of it. And if somebody starts <coughs> trying to push me to say it's got to be this or it's got to be that or it's got to be something else, you're going to hear about it, and I'm going to be gone. All right? I made the agreement to do this work with you with that understanding. All right? Now, I just finished saying that I'm in charge, and nobody's going to tell me what to do, and all that kind of stuff. And that's all true. But I cannot and will not develop that toolbox for you. It's the job of myself and my team to guide you, to inform you, to help you see what the choices are, and to help you work through those choices. But we're not going to make the decisions for you. And we're not going to do anything that might give the impression that we were making decisions at any key point for you. The objective for this, the overriding approach here, is transparency and fairness. I can't guarantee you're going to like what comes out of this personally, but you're going to know how we got there as a group, and you're going to, God willing, 
have a hard time saying it wasn't fair and transparent. But what that means is that an outside consultant, and I live in Cincinnati, I don't, I'm not that far away, but I live in Cincinnati, Matt's in Columbus, Charlie's in Kent, we've got other folks on the team who are from other parts of the state, other parts of the region. We can't be the ones telling you what the results should be. That means that you, all of you, are the ones who are going to figure out what's in that toolbox. That means a couple of things. First of all, that means that you're going to have to participate. And I know that a lot of you have a lot of demands on your time. I know you've got lots of other places that you need to be, lots of other things that you should be doing. You're probably sitting here right now going, oh crap, this woman just keeps talking and talking and talking, and I gotta get that report written, and and uh, so and so needs me to return that phone call, and so and so. All right, I understand all that. And like I said, after this, I just I've got to lay some basic stuff out. After this, you don't have to listen to me talk so much. But. If this toolbox is going to have meaning, if it's going to be relevant to this region, if it's going to make sense for what you as a region need, it has to come from you. And the only way I can get that to come from you is for you to fully participate. If you can't participate, by all means, talk to me about alternates. Talk to me about somebody who can sub in with you, that you can coordinate with. Okay? This is going to be much more active than, than a board meeting where you can sit and you can listen and you vote or you don't vote. We're going to need you to be engaged. But we'll do the best we can to help you be engaged. And part of helping you be engaged, and we'll talk about this at the end when we talk about process, is that we have an online platform to help facilitate additional information and some additional, hopefully, conversation between meetings. Okay? I know some people have had a little bit of the trouble getting that working so far, and we'll work that. We'll work some training with that. Okay? And if you don't want to use it, you don't use it. But I want you to have that opportunity to have that additional discussion, because we can't do everything. We're just not going to have enough time here, even with pushing you as hard as I can. This is the last piece. I wrote out notes for myself. I'm not usually a note talker, but I want to make sure I hit the important points. This group, the steering committee and this TAP, you're not doing this work in the void, right? At the end of the day, what comes out of this process has to go to the TAP, it has to go to the board of directors. It has to be voted on, it has to be approved. And if you've been involved with this process, you know that that's not a fait accompli. That's not something that you can just assume will magically happen. There's an old saw that people who work with me get really sick of hearing, which is scratch a planner, find a dictator underneath. I got a snicker, I feel much better now. That actually comes from the footnote of an economics text. And I used to know the source, and I can't think of it now. But my economics professor in graduate school used to repeat that to us with the lead. And the older I get and the longer I do this, the more I'm aware of that. It's very easy, whether you are a planner or a person who is in this room for whatever reason, it's very, very easy for us to sit here and say, well, of course this is the right choice, and of course this is a logical decision, and of course we should do it that way. My challenge to you as we go through this, you know that board of directors and that tap better than I or Matt or Charlie ever will. We have, and many of you are on one of those bodies. We have to be thinking as we go through this process about what the concerns of the elected officials, the appointed officials, engineers of the region 
Ah, oh, we've got to understand that. We've got to be sensitive to that. We've got to be sympathetic to that. You're going to have a hard challenge because you're going to have some things to balance that do not easily balance. If you work with elected officials as a planner or a staffer or a community development director or whatever role, I need you to be thinking about that experience and I need you to be speaking to it as we go through this process. Okay? Silence does not equal agreement. That was a key learning from the survey. Silence does not equal agreement. But if you're silent, we don't know what it is that you know. So it's your responsibility as part of this to share your learning, to share your understanding with the rest of this body. For those of you who are elected officials, you're in a particularly tough spot because you're going to have, you live that balancing act. You're going to have to be truthful to that. Don't let something go through here that you think can't get past the TAC, can't get past the board. That doesn't mean it can't, can't stretch them. It doesn't mean it can't challenge them. It doesn't mean it can't encourage those bodies, if you feel that it is important to do so, to extend beyond where they've gone before. But be aware. Be cognizant. We're counting on you to help strike that balance. OK? That's my little opening production. By the way, to lay the nagging doubts in your head to rest, yes, I used to be a middle school teacher. <laughs> People usually figure that out within about 10 minutes if I start talking. Somebody's sitting there going, this woman's got to be a teacher. Yes, I taught middle school English. All right, I've got a little bit more talking I'm going to do, and then I'm going to have you do an activity, OK? Now, I do not have handouts of this available. Let's see if I can get this thing to work this time. I've got to like stand on top of it, right? Yay, there we go. OK, Matt, can you pop a light? Thank you. All right. From what I saw before, we've got a couple of people who are new to this process. If you're new to this process, make sure that you get a binder that has, it'll have you know, everything you ever wanted to know and a whole lot more in nice, neatly bound, printed copy. If you've been on this committee and you don't have that binder anymore, whatever, don't worry, everything's online, right? nprpc.org slash RLU, Regional Land Use. Every document that has been generated is on. Okay? What I'm going to show you right now is this is, and this is strictly me talking. Don't touch my. What I'm, the little presentation I'm going to show you right now is strictly me talking my interpretation of what I have seen as we have reviewed and in many cases very exhaustively reviewed the work that the Going Places committees have done to date. And in some cases this stuff might even look pretty familiar to you because some of it's a straight lift from presentations that you have seen in years past. But basically what I want to focus on is what I think you're facing and how you, from what I can see, got to this situation. All right, this is one that should look pretty familiar to you. I'm going to appropriate this table since nobody ever wants to sit in the front pew, right? Just like church, nobody wants to be in the front pew, which is good because I swear that. This is a slide that came straight out of one of Martin's presentations. This is factual information from phase one. Over the course of a 30-year period for the region, 
19% population growth, I'll show you in a minute, that hasn't been the case lately. 76% expansion of the regional urban area, 32% population density decline. Again, this is a straight lift from one of MBRPC's previous presentations. But what the population density decline? If you're not a planner, what does that mean anyways? Well, keep that density piece in your head, but also take a look at this. Now, this is a presentation from Dr. Robert. This is, again, straight lift. I didn't change it. That's why the, the layout's a little different. This is from Dr. Robert Stock, who's a professor at the University of Dayton, and it was a presentation given to the Economic Development Partnership in February of this year. Was anybody at that presentation? I know Mark and Brian were a couple of us. Okay. Did I get the organization correct? I-70 to 75. Okay. It was this I are you very familiar with that? There's a, a, a group. Predominantly business and economic development interests that are that are that are focused on I-70-75 corridor economic development. So this is a presentation that was given to them. And this is again, I was able through Martin to get Dr. Stock's slides. This is his information. Metro area, 2000 to 2012. I think that line tells the story. This is total employment over that region. That region that we just finished saying had expanded in the previous three decades, 90% increase in population, 76% increase in developed area, 32% decrease in density. Plus we've lost a lot of employment. Here's my interpretation of that. Back 20, 30 years ago, we had a fair amount of money to work with relative to the amount of physical space that we needed to take care of. It was kind of kind of all together. Today, the amount of the and, and I'll show you some other numbers that point you in this direction, the amount of money that the region has to work with has not increased. The employment has declined, and I will show you the money shortly. And that money is now, that income, that revenue, is now spread over a larger area. That's not a political statement. One thing you will discover from me very quickly is that my political party is pragmatism. These are, this is, these are factual pieces of information. Money has not increased at the rate that use of land has increased. It's a fact of the matter. That's had some, some repercussions. We all know that we've had an increase in vacancy in the area. I haven't seen recent numbers. And interestingly, the Dayton Daily Business Journal, the, I'm sorry, the, the, the Dayton newspaper, yes, and the Dayton, both of them, have been fairly upbeat. And I've, been, I've read the Dayton papers for years. They've been pretty upbeat lately about, you know, we're getting stuff is happening and we're getting more business and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All of which is true. But newspapers, as you know from your work in local communities, newspapers look at, you know, moments in time. They very seldom look at long-term trends. And so we focus on this little blip and sometimes we miss the, the longer trend that's more has more impact. So we know we've had an increase in vacancy in the region. That's commercial, that's industrial, that's, that's residential. We know, and again, this slide is from one of Martin's presentations. I don't have to tell you what your budget situations look like. I live in Ohio. I know what this looks like. You know what this looks like. And I thought it was particularly intriguing. Mayor, do you remember when you wrote that article? Okay, about a year. Thank you for letting me pick on you. Mayor Mayor is one of the authors of the article at the bottom that says local government toolbox is empty. I know this is not news to you folks. You know how tight your local budgets are 
and you know what your projections look like. The other thing that I'm going to do throughout this whole process is I get to be the voice of your nightmares sometimes. And I'm going to call them out because we don't deal with these things unless we deal with them. And of course, because we'll keep it for you. Um, we know what our, our friends in Columbus and D.C. have had a tendency to do to you good folks at, at the local level lately. And it's not just a cluster, it's, you know, fill in the blank. So, if I were in your shoes, I kind of feel like this. You're in a tough spot. As a region, and as local municipalities, as local townships, as counties, as agencies. You know this. You know this better than I do. You even know this better than Charlie does. And Charlie knows everything. Is this you in the picture? Yeah. It, okay, yeah. Amazing what you find in clip art sometimes. You're in a tough spot. Going places, fundamentally, to a great extent, is about trying to figure out how to deal with that tough spot. So here's a message for you. None of this started yesterday. You know that. Just because the paper put up, puts up an article about something that happened in the last month, that doesn't mean that the trends involved don't date back long, 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 long before. Here's the regional issue in one picture. You got a whole bunch of stuff you need to take care of. You got a whole bunch of roads. You got a whole bunch of towns. You got a whole bunch of bridges. You got a whole bunch of people who have a whole bunch of needs. And you're, you're, the sack that you can put all that in is only so big. My mother was native of uh, Portsmouth down near uh, on the Ohio River. Do you know where Portsmouth is? It's like long straight south. It's, it's Appalachia. And my mother moved north and quickly moved north in the early 50s. Quickly ditched her accent, but didn't ditch all of her southern ways. She used to always say, you can't put 10 pounds of flour in a five pound sack. People heard that saying before? In a more indeveloped here. Well, that's true. You go, okay, my mother was a lady. Actually, she was. But, you know, we'll go there. We'll go there. Um, yeah, 10 pounds of fill in the blank, 5 pounds sack. All right? Again, these are the facts of the case, folks. We got a lot that needs to be done for this region. And that's not just about one city or another city or another city. This is about the region. You've only got so much money to work with, and that amount of money is getting compressed and compressed and compressed, right? You know that federal aid is not going up. It's not going up any time in the near future. You know that state funding. I mean, I don't even need to go there. Patrick can, can tell you more about that than I'll ever know in the month of Sundays. I, the wonderful thing about this is, is, is the, the cringing, groaning faces that, that you make while your, people make while you talk about all this stuff. But that's a facts of the matter, right? All right, I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know. What I'm telling you is, what I'm doing is kind of laying it out on your face. This is the stuff that you can't run away from. And ultimately, because of what we just talked about, you're on your own. You're gonna, it is going to be, and, the, and there's a, an increasing number of people who are talking, who are coming to this conclusion. And they range from the Brookings Institute to, to Richard Florida, to my friend Chuck Marone from Strong Towns. Very, very, very consistently, people are coming to the conclusion who work with local governments and regions Y'all just gonna have to figure this out on your own. You can't count on 
any of those bigger entities to do it for him. So that's what your is. Now, as an, organ as an organization, as NVRPC, you actually done a better job so far of dealing with this proactively than a lot of MPOs in the country. And we're going to talk a lot over the course of this process about other MPOs. And sometimes we as the consultant team are going to have a hard time coming up with a good example. Because while there are many MPOs who are trying to do this stuff, there's a lot that aren't. So I am going to, I don't think we need to turn on the lights, but I'm going to walk over here. And I'm going to show you something. And you welcome to come up and take a look at this later on if you want to. I love the fact that there's a lot of here, by the way. This, I, I, I'm horrible with mice, so this is fantastic. Thank you. All right. This enormously long piece of paper that was so tall that it had to come up sideways because nobody was tall enough to reach the whole way is the timeline of how going places has evolved, how it has progressed to date. Martin and his crew initially did this so that when my consulting team sat down with them, this was a way for us to, to understand. They came up with this idea to help us understand what all had happened in the past. And it was so cool and it was so effective that when we were planning this meeting, I said, hey, can you guys bring that? Can you put it up for people to see? So I'm going to just walk through this real quickly. This initiative dates back to 2007, when the executive committee and the board made a decision to pursue a regional land use planning process. The committees were put together in October of 2007, and phase one, which was the existing conditions information that I just ran through, started in 2008. Now remember, this is right, you know, keep in mind, as we go back to talk about existing conditions, where the recession falls. So this started back then. Phase one, that initial, okay, this is our way of the lane. This is what we understand. That was approved 